No, do you hear it, Booza Gimit? Early in the morning, a murder was committed. Vien Brigata Sigurimit. The agents of Segurimi came. Vien Besnik Tenver Hodz. The dogs of Enver Hodja. Me alon Kred Zerminto. To set the whole land on fire. People were standing here. This entire field was teeming with Sigurimi's men. Everybody was armed. A machine gun stood over here. Another one was right there. They gathered people and led them to the forest and tortured them there, there in the forest. And like a raging wild beast, they destroyed everything in their paths. They came and took him behind the school building, where they beat and tortured him severely. The beatings could even be heard by people who were gathered over here. They heard everything. And the cursed captain took our tissues and told the lieutenant to have him shot. Before the shots were fired, he said the Hail Mary three times. As the last bullet found its mark, he called, Have mercy on me, Lord, and Forgive me, Lord. It is here that they killed him, exactly on this spot. They wanted meat and alcohol. They forced people to bring them these things. After they'd shot Tisha, they brought two sheep and drank enormous quantities of alcohol. They celebrated this murder. That's exactly how it happened. When communism came, it brought the cruelest dictatorship to this place. The communists persecuted people in each village. Meeting after meeting was held, in the middle of the night and during the day, to scare people to death. At least one person in every village was killed without trial. The land ran thick with blood. Fear gripped every man. Whose turn would it be next? They knew he was innocent. I swear that he was innocent. He was simply of a different mold. He had cousins abroad. After two years, they let him out and he was free for some time. Then they came one night and told him that he was being arrested in the name of the nation. His son watched, crying, as they took him away. After 16 months internment, he received a 20-year sentence. They took my father and they took me. They beat me. I spent 18 years in jail. Yes, I was in jail. Later, when they let me out, I was interned. The worst thing was that my brother was afraid to come home during this time. I swear to God, in the street, when I walked to work, my neighbours, my friends didn't wish me ill, but they didn't dare ask if I was tired. Had they done that, somebody would immediately show up, asking why they were talking to me. My father-in-law died, and even my relatives were afraid to come to my house. Believe me, we had nothing to put into the pot for our supper. The relatives of a prisoner could not lead normal lives. They were branded for life. I had five children, and they were the best students in the whole village. 
It was said that other such children could not be found. Later, though, they could only get work at the cooperative. They had no other right. There were those who said that nobody would want to marry them and that they won't be allowed to continue their studies. The regime was such that they were afraid. Thus, so many suffered in our village. They were tortured for their faith, for the beliefs taught to them by religion, for the fact that they remained faithful to their God. This communism was not real communism, but an empty promise. We experienced something different, Bolshevism, or the absence of faith, when a brother no longer knows his sister, and the sister no longer knows the brother. We survived only thanks to our faith in God. Those who were not murdered in their own villages by Hox's security agents spent many years imprisoned without trial, sentence or even accusation of any kind. Treason against the people and country was called Item 55, agitation and propaganda, which meant that one could be executed not only for acting or talking, but even simply for thinking. Whoever wanted to pass the border was called an enemy and killed straight away on the road. Thus, this zoo was closed off and it was not allowed for anybody to leave. The prisons were torture. They were a hell in which there was not the slightest respect for the dignity of man. In terms of human rights, we can say that we took several steps backwards in comparison with the period directly before and during the Second World War. A certain man who did time in Matthausen told us that this prison in Spach was even stricter and more dangerous. In winter, we wore light soldiers' coats, even when the temperature fell to minus 15 degrees. Roll call was at five in the morning. The police would burst into the cells and force us outside. Sometimes, we would be kicked. Then we would go to the toilets. But this was inhuman since these toilets were open. 1,700 people had only a few faucets at which to wash, so everything had to be done very fast. When the whistle sounded, everyone had to fall silent and stand to attention. Even during downpours and snowstorms, in the winter ice, or under the scorching summer sun. These drill calls were torturous for the prisoners, especially for those with ideals. They were required to go hat in hand and bow before their political enemies. This was a moral pressure that was exerted on many, many people. The daily ration of bread was 600 grams, but for us, there was never more than 500 grams. The roof leaked and the rain fell on our plates. Dinner was frequently inedible. The mills contained many tomatoes which soured and turned everything into vinegar. In winter, we ate some sort of dry pulp that tasted like reeds or wood shavings. It was impossible to eat. 